is it. At this time, I'm going to ask um, our adult discipleship leader, Jason Lodel, to come forward. And I might have to help the sound desk get the congregational meeting. Look at that. Look, they're good. Good morning. Thank you. Rush, Rush usually does this. He's out of town, so it fell on me. Uh, so you got me to deal with here. Um, I will go through this, and I will say all of our names are up there. So if you have any further questions, uh, first off, if you have questions, please shout them out. I'm a teacher. I'm used to kids raising hands and asking questions. I love it. Um, I may not have the answer. I may have to defer to someone else, but... I will field any question you have, and if you rather seek us out afterwards, that's fine, or a pastor, or if you need clarification, suggestions, comments, anything like that, we are here to serve you, so please do let us know. Um, and as you can see, all the people up there that you can reach out to for different specific areas. And we'll, we'll go through all of it. Um, likewise, if there's anyone in the audience here that needs to clarify or expand on anything I'm saying, please interrupt. All right, starting out, um, I know you guys see it as you come in here. We have the, uh, the food pantry that is serving the community every Sunday. That has grown tremendously um, since we started doing that. It's amazing to see the, the pounds of food that come in and out of the door. Um, us partnering up with Second Harvest, getting um, food at a reduced cost. Um, Publix, the, the food that gets picked up there every week, bread and things like that. So it is amazing to see how we serve the community in that capacity. Um, at, at a fairly low price to do that and through donations. We do have a couple slides here of breakdowns, some demographics. Um, the information is collected from the different families as, as they come in. And so um, we've got some demographics here, the number of families served here. And I think the previous slide kind of dovetails into um, this. And actually, Pastor, if you don't mind speaking on this a little bit more, um, the, the missionary flunker here and an opportunity that he is um, going to present us with in the future. <coughs> I should go in front. Um, that's missionary Tim Flunker. He's a mission counselor. We have uh, six mission counselors, I think, um, for the normal ones. There's one assigned to two districts. You have 12 districts in our church body. They just help people. There's one that held my hand for like eight years because... I was a theologian, theologian when I came out of the seminary, but I didn't know how to be a pastor or a missionary. And there's some tricks to the trade, there are, where you can get better at it. And they've helped. Tim Flunker is the uh, his, um, Spanish mission counselor. He serves 150 churches in our church body that have uh, the open door into the community of people who do not speak English. And there's no reason to not tell them the gospel. And I didn't know exactly what to do, so I talked to Tim Satorius. He runs a Spanish church at Grayson Falls Church, Virginia, and he said, what a lot of churches do, Fred, is they do English as a second language, but talk to Tim, because that's his job. And it costs nothing. We um, all contribute to our church body, and they pay for this apparatus that trains called workers and helpers to help churches. And our church council looked at the historical attendance, and so the last Sunday in August, Tim Flunker will come, assuming he can make it. I have not heard back from him. Um, I think I'm going the wrong way. I was trying. I thought there was another <laughs> slide with the date on it. My That's okay. bad. No, I am totally going the wrong way. Boys, I think you can help. Yeah, refresh it for me, If please. you, like, push one and enter. This is why Russ does it, not me, all right? So <laughs> next meeting, shake his hand and say, thank you. Thank you for being here and doing it. I thought there was another slide with the date on. I was trying to, like... I don't remember what I put on the slide. Well, the point is, he's coming August 25th. He's going to preach. We're going to have a meal. And then he does a presentation. He will detail exactly what goes down. English as a second language is not bad. It's okay. It's good. But he said what churches have found that's even better is English Improvement Opportunities, EIO. It's not the old McDonald, but it is EIO, okay? English Improvement Opportunities. What it is, there's 14 verb sounds that you English speakers say flawlessly. You don't even think about it. But if you're not English speaker coming in, those are hard. And so he said churches that do this offer two eight-week courses. And he said, just get volunteers. I told them what we do for Sunday school. If you ask any of our Sunday school teachers, is it a pretty intense commitment to, to teach Sunday school here? Not really. It's once every couple months. It would be similar to that. You can do it every, I don't care. You can do it every week if you want. He said, however many volunteers you have, however many people from the community that want, you pair them up one or two to one, 
and you go over these 14 verb sounds. And this is more effective because most of the Spanish community has had English training. It's free at the community colleges. It's free a lot of different places, but not many people offer this. And they all want to get better. And I said, well, what happens if we get 10 families in a year that want to join our church? I don't know what's going to happen. He said, maybe you will need someone who speaks Spanish to, be, to minister to them. I don't yet. I don't know if I could, I, I, we, but he said we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. The vast majority of the people want to assimilate and they will just join your church. But he'll talk to us about that, but it's kind of an exciting opportunity. And I cannot in good conscience let 50 families come through our carport every week, three of whom who say, we watch you on YouTube because it translates you, and go, oh well. So we're trying to, what should we do? And so this is what we're going to try to do. You can ask anything. Yeah, Mary. And uh, Evelyn, I, I called you Mary to start. I'm so apologetic. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Evelyn. <laughs> Evelyn, um, if you see it, well, all of you should hug Andrea on the way out, but um, she does incredible work. And she suggested that we make a QR code that would direct them to a website, and then they could have as much information as they like. Second Harvest does not want us to pass out paper information, mm -hmm. but if we have a poster and there's a QR code, and they choose to take a picture of it and go there, Well, yeah, sure. Yeah, the, the QR code is, it, it, it works well. You can just say, right. But, so yes is the short answer. We're not going to wait until August. We're going to do that. We're going to collect information. We're going to see if you'd be interested in this because it'd be good if he shows up and says, we have 10 families that want to start. This is the day that says that, that it works for them. So we will not wait. So, but I love the comment and question. And Andrea has already thought through that. So. It is awesome. She, she does great work. Great question. Anybody else? Jason? Okay, well, I clicked through all the slides. You guys saw it, right? So we're out of here. <laughs> I thought there was another slide that gave the date when he was coming, so that was my uh, going too quick. I promise I'm not just trying to get you out the door here. Um, but here we go. We've got um, some numbers here uh, associated with the food pantry. You can see how that's doing. Summer ministry plan coming up. You heard Pastor plug it. I'm going to plug it again here too. Um, next week, the rummage sale. Yes, there's already a pile of stuff in the back there, so please do add to that. If you've got it out in the trunk, remember to bring it in. Um, or join us on Friday um, at, at 6 p.m., or I think there'll be some of us here a little bit before that, and help set stuff up, put stuff out, put it in different piles. It's really not that bad. It's just kind of getting certain things in th certain areas. The bonus to you is you get first picks, um, anything you see and, and you want. So, you know, um, that, that's, that's one of the advantages to showing up early. If you can't make it there on Friday um, and, you, and you have stuff that you want to drop off early Saturday morning, 
we will take it whenever you can get it here. As Pastor said, it's a great opportunity to get people in the door. We do the rummage sale thing, and Pastor works his magic. You should see that guy go if you've never done it before. He is there working the crowd, talking to people. Um, he is in his element at, at that event. So um, if nothing else, come and watch him do his thing that I don't think he stops talking the entire time, and he loves it. So um, I think he's one of the biggest fans of this, uh, and, and it's great for the community, great for us. Again, summertime, um, this is starting back up with um, grilling out, so make note of those dates. You'll see those dates again in the future on the website, in the bulletins. Pastor will plug it here in church. Um, show up hungry. He loves firing, firing up the grill and um, invite some friends, invite some neighbors. And it looks like we are doing movies after that. So Indiana Jones, if I'm not mistaken, coming up here. Um, so again, bring friends, bring, bring family, burgers, movie, It's make a night of it. I'll leave that up there for a second um, to see some things coming up here in the near future and a little bit further on down the road. Again, all of these as we move closer, don't feel like you have to commit them to memory here and now that we will be plugging these, asking for help. That's the great thing about this church that people step up and these things get done. So thank you in advance. Um, if there's something you see up there that you'd like to be a part of, please do um, show up and help out with those events. A little bit. Um, whole calendar here, some of these that we've done already, um, and some of these to come here. So again, as they get closer, we will be plugging them. Anything there you saw? Any other opportunities here? If there's anyone in the audience say, hey, I've got some time on my hands, what can I do? Pastor, I'm sure, can pair your talent with something that can be helpful here in the church. So see him, see a council member. If there's something that you noticed up there, like, hey, I'd be really good at doing that, or hey, I'm you know, pretty savvy with some of these um, different websites and stuff like that. If you'd be interested in helping out, we would love to have you. Bible studies are still going on. We have several different options and opportunities for people, depending on what your schedule is, depending on when you're available throughout the week. Um, some of them are happening, obviously, here on Sunday, before service, after, after the service. Um, but there's also ones that are meeting Wednesday morning. Daniel, the ladies of the congregation have um, one. See Linda, that she's here. If you have any questions about that, if you'd like to join, if you, know, you had it at one point and want to get back into it, um, see her, everything I hear, it seems like the ladies have a great time with the discussions that they have and the different Bible studies that they do. Um, again, the one that is before the service here um, at, at the church in the morning. The one after the service that we've got a couple more weeks of that before we wrap that up and then transition into a different Bible study. And of course, um, there are a lot of other opportunities that pastor sends out emails um, with different things in there. Um, you can go back and watch the old sermons um, that have been archived. Plenty of opportunities uh, to meet your needs depending on where you are at different times through the week and whatnot. Sunday school is still going strong. I think we are kind of coming to the close of that as the school year wraps up. So thank you to all of our Sunday school teachers that have helped out. We appreciate that. Um, if that's something that you could serve in the future, that as the school year starts back up after summer, um, again, seek out one of the council members. We can get you on that list. And it's not a huge commitment. The more teachers there are, the less often that you are you know, stepping out to, to do the Sunday school. So if that's a talent you have, please do let us know. Confirmation class, we have several different confirmands going through or about to start going through. Um, and if you have kids of that age, talk to Pastor. He can set you up with the resources there. Property report, there are always things going on here. Pete, Ed, others are, are constantly, you know, sometimes I show up on Sunday just to see what's been updated, improved, painted, etc. cetera. Um, these guys are hard at work and there's a lot of stuff going on that they're making updates to. I'm sure you guys have seen um, a lot of that, especially as we get closer to this here, starting up in the very near future. Um, kind of the, the Airbnb of churches maybe would be a good way to describe that if you're not familiar. Uh, and Pastor, question, comment. Just a comment. Uh, and I think Sue helped too. Um, if you go out to the playground and look at the uh, playhouse thing, uh, there are flower boxes on the house. I mean, it looks like the Taj Mahal of playhouses. It's beautiful. Pete and Sue spent a lot of time working on that and I mean they repainted it. It's, it's gorgeous. So but yeah. so if nothing else, poke your head out the back door um, before you leave today and, and see what that looks like. Elder report. Um, again, worship, a lot of opportunities. If, if you are not here, if you cannot make it on Sunday morning for whatever reason, that there's a lot of different ways that you can see pastor, his sermons, um, and some of the other things that he's putting out there. We've got the numbers here. You can see an upward trend with the in-person. 
Um, we've got some more statistics, mind-blowing, of, of all the clicks and the hours that pastors getting on different platforms like YouTube, um, the stats, and just the views. I'll, I'll let that sink in for just a minute. That's huge. Um, the amount of, of people that are clicking in, tuning in from here, outside of the area, um, you know, th theoretically anywhere in the world can watch him. Membership two, uh, again, you can see kind of that upward trend, which is a great thing as we are doing more and more outreach, hopefully reaching more people in the community, bringing them in, sharing the word of God with them. Again, the plug for any opportunities that you see uh, yourself fitting into up there, or if there's some talent that you have that didn't show up in the slideshow, please do talk to us. We'd love to have you help out and serve in whatever capacity you feel comfortable in doing. If uh, it's one of these roles, you can go to the church website that there is a place to sign up. There is a uh, Google Sheets there that you can put your name in, and whether it's uh, doing things like ushering, helping out with the food pantry, sign up and uh, get yourself involved that way. Down towards the bottom of the website is where you can find that. If you know of anyone that needs to be contacted, um, whether they're a shut-in, whether, you know, medical necessity that they can't get out, whatever the case may be, um, please do let us know that um, we, we can get in touch with them. Tom, I know, does a lot of that, is great with that, uh, reaching out, visiting people that are not able to get here for whatever reason, so make sure to pass that on to him so he's aware if he's not already. Financial report. Um, you can see uh, income versus expenses up there. And I do want to take a little time here. Um, we met as a council yesterday. We're not quite at the point where red flags are raising and alarm bells are going off. But our numbers are a little bit lower. As you can see, um, checking is a little bit lower now. Uh, with the summertime coming up, I know a lot of times families travel. Just the reminder that there is the opportunity to continue giving through the online giving um, and to prayerfully consider, uh, you know, in addition to whether you're here, whether you're traveling, um, just to make sure that our financial needs are being met here. And this kind of dovetailing into some other expenses coming up that um, we did find out that we will see an increase in our mortgage and our insurance in the coming months. So um, pair that with uh, the, the numbers are down a little bit and around the corner we've got some bigger bills coming up. So, um, you know, obviously we need to, to be able to make our bills and, and pay our bills there. So again, prayerful consideration as you are considering what you can give and, and the ways that you can do that. That's it, now you saw it twice. Um, are there any questions? And again, if you think of some later, reach out to any of us or catch us on the way out or catch Pastor. Thank you very much um, and thank you for everyone that does so much here to make this place happen and all the great things that are happening. Thank you. Have a great week.